okay good afternoon everyone and uh, some students are joining but uh, still we'll go ahead and uh, get started and uh, as all of you are aware uh, we have successfully completed the inauguration uh, through the orientation program on 15th uh, gauri shankar just i am setting the context and tone for you so that it becomes okay. easy see they they came in on 15th uh, just uh, four days back uh, they mm -hmm. have just got started uh, uh, with the program pgdm journey as such so two years quite intensive program so this is the first lecture so you are the opening batsman like sachin <laughs> i would put it that way <laughs> okay uh, students uh, let me just take the privilege of uh, introducing uh, gauri shankar and uh, in fact uh, the profile is quite enriching and i am sure uh, you will have a lot of uh, inspirational learnings to take away at the end of this session so that that's how i can simply put it across uh just to give a quick uh, cursory view about his uh, 15 years career uh, he has been a transformation enthusiast that means wherever he associates he would like to bring in the transformation and his 15 years uh, professional experience is a combination of uh, e-commerce then ITS that is IT enabled services and of course financial research so it's a quite a uh, unique combination he has been playing the role as a innovation catalyst uh, in variety of uh, entrepreneurial ventures he has been instrumental in starting quite a few startups and supporting them because he works in a accelerator he has a proven uh, professional track record especially in the agile framework of course you will understand all these terminologies as you go around agility is nothing but depending on the situation you will uh, evolve and you will create yourself in a new avatar and so that you will become uh, very relevant and uh, valuable you will be able to make the contribution that that's what is basically agility which we talk in the business context and some of you would have heard but you know just trying to help you because uh, you are still in the beginning of the journey and in startup ecosystem especially in india and uh, china uh, he, he has been very actively involved of course after this session i'll try to give an overview on what exactly is the startup ecosystem so he is actively involved in even uh, branding initiatives especially to see that the business outcomes are being ensured so th these are his uh, core areas uh, just to have a little peep into his uh, professional career six year he has worked in uh, mox and currently he is there as a head of uh, the startup accelerator and two years he was with amazon and about two years he was with royal bank of uh, scotland especially in the business vertical and five years he was with uh, rr donley so coming to his educational profile uh, he is a product of i am bangalore under a eep executive education program you know it is one of the most prestigious program uh, we have from imb and mba from nibm and bachelor's from madras university just to give uh, among the many accolades which he has uh, he has been awarded of uh, innovation leadership award uh, from karnataka in 2020 and he is also the co-founder of uh, lixr solutions private limited so he is an employee he is an entrepreneur and he is an uh, excellent contributor and i would only say please extract the maximum from uh, gauri that's it <laughs> that, that is how i would like to uh, uh introduce him and uh, we'll have a simple ground rules uh, uh gauri shankar will go through his presentation and uh, just follow his instructions if you have any queries you feel free to put it in the chat i'll be uh, uh, managing and monitoring it and in between i will just act as a moderator to help him to get the perspectives so that we'll uh, run the session very effectively and equally very smoothly so what are you gauri shankar mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. That's a that's an overwhelming introduction. Uh, no, no, no. You, I have told <laughs> what you are there. That's all. I I picked it from LinkedIn, honestly. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing thank else. You. Thank you. Thank you. There's about hundred people on this forum. Space, so I I just picked up the threads from digital. That's it. <laughs> great, great, great. Uh, there's about hundred people on this forum. Uh, good afternoon to all of you, uh, and uh, I'm wishing you a, a great. a lot of luck to you know get started with this uh, amazing venture and um, today primarily this session was targeted on discussing innovation um, since my backdrop my career kind of sits around that area we wanted to uh, pick up this topic called demystifying innovation i'm going to start sharing my screen you'll have a little bit of discussion here and there uh, in places where uh, i'm seeking your inputs where i'm asking you to say something or share your uh, thoughts uh, 
uh, it'll be nice if you can put it on the chat window since there's a hundred lot of, hundred number of people uh, there might not be enough window to listen to all of you but it'll be easier to see it on the chat window so uh, quickly maybe we could you know collect inputs from you whenever we have to uh, through the chat window hope that is okay with all of you is yeah, that okay perfect. professor yeah that's perfectly fine okay um now uh, to start with uh, one quick exercise uh, since since all of you are uh, are in some or the other way you know at the beginning of your career uh, this this one word uh, that will keep pounding you really hard as you start your career one is innovation you feel it, at a point you will even feel that it is a little over abused right uh, people will use that word uh, liberally uh, and even without the right context at sometimes uh another one is obviously agility as professor quoted out uh, you will keep uh, hearing that now that's one of those buzzwords that will uh, that will keep ringing as well these two are kind of intertwined in a way right so very closely uh, associated in terms of how often you uh, hear them so just to set the context for today um if some of you uh, or everybody uh, if possible if you could drop some of the most innovative products or ideas that you've heard in the last 5 years alone you can put it on the chat window uh forget about iPhones uh anything that you felt is an innovative idea just drop it on the chat window just for my uh, view uh, students feel free use the chat window very actively great started to come uh, ola e scooters 3g 4g okay i am just helping I... with my triggering them up great great id dosa batter electric vehicle zero the app great put it to Indian everyone group. not not to individually put it to everyone so that everyone yes. will be in to do it yes yes please please put it on the on the group window so that everyone sees it also kindle reading device is the last one that i'm seeing on the screen Vogue rentals, okay. Okay, someone has written to me saying that there's no option for everyone. Everyone can see it, right, uh, Professor? If we have want to, the chat. Uh, current, are you putting uh, the chat enabled? How is it's it? It's enabled, sir. It is enabled. Great, okay. great. Fine. Alexa, Alexa mm -hmm. is is nice. Alexa is great. Robotic vacuum cleaners, digital payments. we are getting a mix of it both physical and digital innovations government idea to use ethanol uh, okay google lens interesting okay coasters that charges phone self driving cars google glass upi upi is an amazing piece of work completely agree dock scanner power banks portable inverters cred app another interesting uh, platform innovation great SpaceX by Elon Musk. I was surprised that no one called Elon Musk yet. <laughs> great, great. Cryptocurrencies, amazing. I said Tesla. Yeah, someone said Tesla. I overread it. My bad. Zomato, General Store, Clubhouse app, the recent vibe right now. Ola again. Maybe we'll call it a tie. Bitcoins. Okay, we'll stop here now. Medcart. Yes, amazing. Zoom. That, that's teams. quite a variety of examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant, brilliant set of uh, examples. Okay, so we'll call it a tie right now. We'll stop here, right? Um, if you look at the the list, right? Predominantly, the moment we said innovation, everyone had to um, think about a lot of digital work, electronic products, uh, because innovation kind of rings that vibe to us, right? Immediately, it is about a lot of invention. that's that's what we think about right uh, and and uh, and it's natural and i'm saying it's not just you no one is an exception to this but that's how our brains are tuned the moment we say an innovative product i think there were few stand out someone called out id dosa batter very interesting uh, you know view because it is a product innovation it doesn't have anything to do with technology obviously well utilized technology has taken the product to the market uh, in terms of the cycle time how often they refill and all of that but it's an amazing example or a stand out example for me in in the in the overall list right so i would like to uh, 
start discussing on these lines right to start with the factor that innovation is not necessarily just idea right um, innovation is an idea that has a viable marketplace right it, it has some amount of viability it is possible with technology without technology but it is possibility of executing it it is desirable to user basically there is a customer element to it someone who is a consumer of it comes into play then it becomes innovation when the customer buys into it that's when it becomes innovation you see this this flying cars were invented 25 to 30 years back but it is not one of those in your list primarily because um, it's it's not something that has already gone through this cycle right everyone spoke about consumer touching product most of your examples were things that were touched felt marketed or sold to you right that's that's primarily the ideation element that converts into innovation we often get stuck into the fact the moment uh, people who are trying to hire in the innovation space people who are trying to say that i will be innovative they generally think about one element having great new ideas that doesn't alone convert into innovation so this is our first lesson for the day uh, in this session that i want you to you know impart is that idea does not translate to innovation and very often we put this no. bulb example right so the moment whenever we say an idea an innovation the logo has to be a bulb right uh, because we quickly uh, resort to that and a great invention of time and hence uh, bulb comes into picture right um, let's talk a little more about the bulb itself uh, this is the journey of uh, our our uh, electric lighting innovation um the first one candles uh, have been there for maybe a thousands of years uh then came the uh, tungsten filament bulb uh, which is which is the biggest symbol of idea today primarily because uh, it was one of the greatest innovation of times I remember there were people who were parallelly doing very similar work but filament tungsten bulb was the one that brought into large market adoption that was one of the reasons why it's it's it stands out as an innovative product right thousands of years to uh, a filament bulb one jump so candle to bulb is one jump take that reference now from there to the cfl bulb you have any idea how many years we took to jump from one innovation to the other what is our speed to jump any one uh, you know calculated guess Sir, maybe one of us, uh, Richa, yourself, anyone can share that, right? Any calculated guess? How many years we took between each of these jumps? Uh, they are putting 15, 20, in the chat. 25. Yeah. Great, great. 40 years. Actually, approximately around 40 years is, is the time to uh, for the first jump. And the second jump actually happened much faster, right? Which is to the LED bulbs, um, per se. We had LED bulbs from 70s, but we don't know it. But LED bulbs have been in uh, in in usage for almost uh, for the last 40 years. But we believe that it is a recent innovation, um, primarily because uh, it hasn't reached the market yet, right? So again, going back to the cycle of innovation, right? So it is idea that has a viable marketplace and a consumer put in place, right? So now remember this jump element, right? So from thousands of years to 50 years to 20 years, then to down to 10 years. What exactly is happening here is called the exponential growth process. So whenever it comes to the cycle of innovation, when you want someone to be innovative, when your thought process is about converting something into an innovative product, uh, lose the linear thought process. Do not think about progressive or linear growth. Talk about exponential growth. And what exactly is exponential growth? Uh, did everyone notice my first slide uh, that I had uh, as, as a starting point? Something called disruption, reinvent, reimagine, and disrupt, right? Um, so exponential growth process will enable what you call as a disruption. Whenever there is an opportunity for you to create a product line, which is not necessarily just improving what that previous product was, but to create a brand new thought process. Uh, in this example, imagine if someone has invented larger and longer candles that didn't qualify as an innovation that's not an exponential thought process from a candle which had a different fuel and a different lighting mechanism 
to a bulb is an innovation primarily because the complete thought process is disrupted it is changing from one to another let's uh, let's take some real world examples right um, um, i'm going to share a very short story um, and uh, we will we will have a, a quick discussion uh, based on a product innovation right before that so i'm going to play a video um mm -hmm. sir if you can confirm if you are able to hear the audio that will be really great yeah yeah i i will help you on that thank you it's just a 2 minute video uh, remember i was quoting the example of id dosa batto just listen to this innovation please are you able to hear the audio sir ah uh, no not yet ah uh, you are still not picked up if i'm right oh, hold on uh, that's fine not to worry yeah it has audio observing yes okay. listening even you are able to see the video well. wherever they are video is not there a deep the understanding of people is the power of one minute maybe you can keep it ready and then play it then i think it is no, isn't as simple as it sounds um, yes no no both are there you can start from the beginning yes i'll do that observing listening even living with people wherever they are a deep understanding of people is the power behind purposeful innovation take razors for the millions of men in india choosing a razor isn't as simple as it sounds many sources of information many forms of inspiration many ways to try many ways to buy Gillette's unique understanding from listening completely to Indian men and women from all walks of life led to a more comprehensive collection of insights and shaving products that are bringing Gillette's trusted name to more men across India. From the close comfort of Gillette Mach 3 to the speed of Gillette Vector to the safety and value of Gillette Guard, the Gillette brand is delighting more Indian men today than ever before. We're all delighted in different ways. Distinct personalities and diverse preferences are what make the world go round. Listening completely goes beyond hearing what's said. We're driven to uncover the authentic spoken and unspoken insights that help make our brands better. Insights that give us new ideas for innovations that can make everyday life better. For more people in more parts of the world more completely all right going back to the uh, dosa batter example someone shared uh, i'm very happy that you brought that up um hope the video was clear for everyone um ideally <laughs> gillette had only about 37 percentage market share in india uh, prior to launching this product called gillette guard uh many of you would have used it also i'm i um, yeah i've used it i don't stand the sample for that anymore but i used to use it uh but the product was built specifically for indian uh landscape and with that they increased their uh, market share by 12 percentage which is a large margin when it comes to business values from 37 they've gone to 49.1 percentage market share in india primarily because they launched one product uh it is innovation it doesn't have any technology in the backdrop uh, it is an everyday use product but there was a lot of research in terms of customer point of view so whenever you're talking about innovation look at the consumer or customer point of view as a critical element um and um, coming to uh, jumping the curve example that we were discussing about i'm picking up this short story uh shared by this there's a lot of noise in the back can everyone be on mute please uh request everyone to be on mute please okay it's better now thank you um 
there's something called the i story which is shared by the gentleman named uh, guy kawaski um, he is uh, he's an ex apple guy and uh, he's known for this book called start uh, art of start um, and uh, you can probably read more about him but let me share the i story uh, from his point of view in 1900s about uh, 120 years back uh, ice was harvested and not manufactured in today's world it will be completely funny to think about the fact that ice was harvested basically people went out to frozen lakes or frozen ponds they will cut ice with saw uh, take it back to towns and sell it for consumers this is how ice was uh, sold as a business in the past from there uh, in about less than 20 30 years people realized that they could actually have factories where they could manufacture ice where they started freezing water in one place and uh, they started again selling it to consumers right uh, now if you look at it from harvesting ice to manufacturing ice is the first jump very similar to our candle to bulb right it has no connection uh, people didn't improve the methods of harvesting they didn't bring in new labor they didn't bring new machinery to harvest the ice but instead they created a method to manufacture the ice right first jump of innovation in the ice story uh, followed by that uh, i'm sure most of you know uh, quickly in next two to three, uh, three decades they uh, you know you had the newest product in the market called the refrigerator now it's a very old product by reference but refrigerators started manufacturing ice at home for everyday consumers yes there is still ice factories no doubts but it took out a whole lot of consumers from the list right so people who owned ice factories did not think about building refrigerators so all of these people are independent new thinkers new age thinkers harvesting ice and selling it new age for that time and then those people didn't think of ice factories and people who had great ice factories did not imagine about refrigerators and today people who are selling refrigerators definitely not, are not seeing the fact that there is a a whole new world that is evolving which probably would make your refrigerators redundant as well right for example there are products which are today being made to uh, to ensure that uh, fruits and vegetables don't get spoiled without needing a refrigeration unit um i can give you a sample called a product called starchy which prevents uh, you know oxygenation of uh, vegetables and fruits so that they don't get spoiled along the process it's edible uh, no chemical involved and it still preserves the food uh then there is stores like amazon fresh uh, already they are delivering under 1 hour then all of a sudden if you believe that they could deliver in 10 minutes what is the real reason for you to have storage of things in your house for hours together if they are able to deliver things to you whenever they want so uh, things can change right so uh, suddenly the ice story lands you in an e-commerce store or with a product that is solving a biotechnology problem so that's that's kind of an example of how an industry or a product can renew itself on every cycle of innovation jump and during each of these jumps it's an exponential jump it is not a linear thought process it's an exponential thought process that helps us to get there uh, and this is a gentleman who said this story uh, in a in a in a speech session um this is his reference uh, called don't worry be crappy right uh, primarily because uh, he wants to push the fact that as innovators we tend to fail people who are in the process of innovation are not successful at the very first attempt uh, and uh, and don't try to perfect your product to to the precision when you are trying to innovate be okay to build something choppy average and still test it out right try and try and eventually perfect the product don't try to build something perfect in the very first attempt and that's why he calls it the art of start it's not necessarily about uh, being innovative with all the skill set and all the perfection but in, being innovative is more of a mindset right where you start don't worry about the complete end results but get started at least don't worry be crappy is a is a statement that he used uh that's this gentleman named guy kawasaki as i said uh, he is from uh, ex apple uh, guy he worked very closely with steve jobs as well yeah uh moving into uh, another important area of innovation uh, so we looked at two elements already one is around uh, what exactly is innovation and how innovation has this jump 
that is exponential in nature. Now we are going to talk about something called uh, open innovation versus closed innovation. Uh, if you look at it about apologies, is there something question being asked? Uh, you can continue, Barusha. Okay, okay. We will take the question, uh, students, a little later. Uh, kindly just uh, go ahead and listen to Garushankar and be on the mute all the time. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so here we are going to discuss about uh, two elements. One is called the closed innovation and the open innovation. Dear about student, two... this created for all official communication. Wanted to create the group after a few days, but there are a lot of you who have started posting in Zoom channel so that faculty and the IT is posting the first over Zoom, ideally we, ideally we create the group once all our students are on board. Prerna, we'll take all these things later, please. Let us not disturb the flow of the speaker. Ah, kindly go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, so just want to bring up this idea behind closed innovation and open innovation. Um, if you look at it about 20 to 30 years back also, the idea of innovation was always closed innovation. There's a group of people uh, sitting and doing research and development, and eventually that group came up with an innovative product. Uh, this is called closed innovation because everything was copyrighted, IP protected, so they want everything to happen within a closed set of walls, uh, like the military, defense, NASA kind of places, where everything was closed, right? Um, and then came along the idea of open innovation, where innovation happened to be a collaborative process without any company boundaries, right? Which means, uh, let me give you a simple example. Infrared, um, today it is the most common uh, technology that we use for many of our electronic devices, starting with television remote, right? But this specific infrared was not invented for the purpose of television remote, not for electronics. It was meant for, uh, primarily for thermal usage, uh, ideally for medical, uh, the thermography was the primary focus of it, uh, but it was for the identifying heat signatures. That was the core need for infrared waves uh, as per the inventor or the scientist who came along with it, right? But it is heavily used in every other industry. Uh, if this is, this is possible only if people were okay to open innovate. If it is a closed innovation concept, you would see that technology happening only in one specific domain or sector. Today, technology comes into multiple fortes of application uh, and uh, that gives us a whole lot of opportunity. Usage is significantly higher and you are able to quickly leverage inspirations from peer industries, right? Um, someone built uh, an app like Airbnb, then someone is imagining if they can do it, do it for uh, accommodation on hotel rooms, can I do it for office spaces? And there is another work happening in that area. Now people are building apps for... Uh, renting out co-working spaces where you could basically walk in higher and, and work in a place and you can walk out, right? Uh, there is an app for that right now. So, but the idea is similar, right? So this is called open innovation where you let inspirations from the work, from the external world flow into your world and also allow that to go out to not restrict it within your boundaries. Obviously, IP still remains. If you build a patent protected product, if you are able to make money out of it, you will safeguard the IP, but let the idea float around uh, is the concept of open innovation. All right. Um, this is a one liner. I want you to kind of keep this uh, in mind. Uh, evolution never leads to revolution. Uh, this is not by me. This is by this uh, company called BMW that everyone would recognize probably. They have the largest R&D facility in the world. Uh, and I, I, I was lucky to visit them in person. Uh, I had a, a, a day long training with them discussing about uh, innovation and business planning. Uh, it was an interesting process. They've specifically bifurcated their innovation into two different areas. One is called evolution. Another one is called revolution. Uh, BMW is the only company which has released a prototype or a concept for how cars will look like in 100 years from now. Uh, you might see it as a video in YouTube called BMW 100. Uh, on the other hand, they also keep innovating for here and now, tomorrow and today, uh, by getting better tires, advanced technologies in navigation, uh, and, uh, and electric vehicles, hybrid technology. All of that is also in place. 
um, but they are clearly aware of the fact but this will not lead to the revolutionary product so they have split this into two different streams that revolutionary thought process is always blue sky thinking open thought process where you imagine the impossible and work based on that that is a revolutionary thought process and then there is evolutionary thought process where you basically work with the standard flow of time uh, progressive thought process and here exponential thought process doesn't come into play uh, so this is something that uh, i learned from bmw I'm, i'm sharing it with you all as well be aware of the fact that if you want to build something revolutionary it is not incremental growth from your existing solution that needs to be a separate thought process by itself um so uh, with with almost 15 20 different uh, uh, industry experts people who keep talking about innovation there was a, there was a debate to define innovation with a with a clear uh, clarity this is the ultimate definition of innovation as per almost 15 different experts in the domain um, executing an idea which addresses a specific challenge and achieves value for both the company and customer that's the reference of innovation um uh, and uh, maybe here we stop and discuss a little more with the with the students if that is okay uh, professor yeah perfectly fine please go ahead right is there any questions that people want to bring up you want to put it on the chat window hello sir sir this is lokesh mm mm-hmm. sir uh, can i get some examples for open and close innovation sure um close innovation is something that happens in the military and the defense space uh, location where people won't let their proprietary technology to get out so for example today we all use gps right uh, this has been in use in the military and the defense uh, setup for almost last 30 40 years but today it is a commercial technology people use it uh, in in open right it used to be a closed innovation uh, product uh, gps is a closed innovation product it remained under the wraps by you know people who are protecting technology from moving out of uh, controlled spaces and then now it is opened up and hence you are able to consume the technology but in today's arena none of the technology that is being created brand new is kept in wraps people are open and exploring it parallelly for example and that's why i gave you the example of infrared rays right so if that is restricted only to the area where it was innovated for we would have we would not have television remotes working on ir um, uh, obviously today there is new and new technology which is coming on in terms of short range communication but ir was a even today all our car remotes all our television remotes are infrared right but it was innovated for a different reason it was done for medical and thermography uh, so that's that's a good example of how you could compare open innovation versus closed innovation so chazel you are the organization which uh, keep a track on these type of like uh, it's the patent right or something now it's a little more liberal so yes patent rights was a much bigger challenge at the uh, about 20 30 years back now it's much more liberal in terms of opening up technology for commercial consumption and moreover uh, ip has evolved itself in the way we consider uh, you know um, uh, intellectual property uh, earlier it was very different in our perception as well okay thank you uh, there is a question uh, from jakir he is uh, just asking the difference between invention and innovation great um, going back to our very first uh, uh, screen of discussion uh, so if you have an invention and if it doesn't consider so for example you you invented a product which does not have a consumer yet uh, and uh, you believe it is great technology it is new no one has thought about it it still is an invention the moment you are able to identify a consumer a market a consumer and it solves a specific problem for that consumer then it becomes innovation that's as simple as that so is yes, outer space uh, tourism that is starting a result of innovation open source innovation it is definitely jisel that and that's an amazing example as well so space travel has been an invention and it has been there for the last 60 70 years but now converting that into a a tourism is an innovation 
so that's that's the uh, edge or difference that we discussed about right and yes it is open innovation thank you sir yes should i look at the chat window for uh, for questions professor uh, i think uh, you can continue and we'll take it uh, because we'll manage the time better ah sure okay no problem um there is one which came in from uh, samu so which is around horizontal and vertical innovation with reference to climate change um so if you if you're talking about one specific uh, problem uh, so you cannot split it by both horizontal and vertical the idea of a vertical uh, innovation or or a reference of vertical innovation is when an innovation happens for one specific domain or area so here if you are referring to vertical innovation it is happening for climate change but assume that you are talking about um, a green fuel technology or an alternative fuel as a, as an innovation that is a horizontal innovation mm -hmm. because it is not solving just the climate change problem it is solving other problems as well parallelly it is solving depletion of resources it is solving uh, cost and economic advances it is solving efficiency and smart vehicle segment all of these are being solved because i'm thinking about a uh, an alternative fuel as a, as a reference so that's that's a good reference between a horizontal versus a vertical mm -hmm. so vertical is when you are innovating for one specific problem alone but horizontal is when you are innovating and it is solving more than one problem along the line how does unicorns innovate their products um, i would twist that question a little bit uh, it innovative products turn into unicorns sometimes not always uh, i know some amazing products that have failed as well uh, so um, unicorns don't necessarily innovate products uh, with with their intention but some great innovative products turn into unicorns primary reason is that they were able to identify a niche um, you know if you are able to find an area that no one has tapped into yet your chances of success is much higher but the even bigger challenge is that uh, going from there into a successful business and that's when you become a unicorn or so right Uh, in today's reference unicorn is just the amount of investment that you get but uh, take an example of uh, e-commerce in india right flipkart is not the first online company in india but today flipkart and amazon is the ones who are ruling the india's e-commerce market but they were not the first one so they identified the niche someone identified the niche uh, but they were not able to successfully execute it all along so that's where it uh, it, it falls apart so uh, innovative products not necessarily always turn into unicorns Sir, may I ask a question, sir? Yes, please, Samir. Sir, can you explain a little bit more about the difference of closed and open innovations with examples? In fact, it was already given, Samir. Though he did yes. give an example of uh, GPS, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. basically a closed innovation, and then he okay. took in uh, open innovation, uh, where in which the things can be taken. Say, for example, uh, infrared. I, I think yes. uh, you, you paid attention to that, if I'm correct. Right. Yes, sir. I do bit understand that closed and open part. See, a very uh, putting it very simply, closed means it will be well within the company or that uh, R and D agency where they will not allow it to come out. That is how it is called closed. After some time, when they protect the IP, that is intellectual property rights, then they will bring it in the open, and others can use it. Other others can use it under a license, or others can also have a license to kind of uh, multiply it. That that is the probably the simplest. Hope I am putting it to Garu Shankar correctly, right? You're so right. So we You're can right. utilize the uh, things. Then we can actually say that it is an open innovation, correct? Yeah. yeah. If others are using it either free or maybe with a nominal price, then it will become an open innovation. Everyone is true. permitted to use. Okay. True. Sure. True. I got it. Sir. Even you have a lot of open source software. Probably that is the best classic example which you can think of. Hundred percent, hundred percent. That's a great reference as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah, fine. What we'll do is we'll allow Gauri Shankar to complete his structured flow, and then I will take all the questions. I'm keeping a, a note of all the uh, chats so that then we'll because some of these points could have been covered by him. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. 
go ahead please any question that you want me to pick up specifically uh, professor um, so there's a lot flowing in i see some of them repeating it as well i'm just looking at it no 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 that is why i just mentioned it to them they can put it in the chat and i'll pick it up okay okay so is there any question that you want me to pick up professor no no now, now, now it is you can call me nandish <laughs> professor is <laughs> great 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 okay okay go ahead go ahead uh, okay someone has asked apple has very different strategies to their products uh, they have the money and also public outreach towards them what gives them the courage to take huge risk in innovation <laughs> okay um apple comes from a different point of view and um, and and apple is not the only company which does that okay uh so there's this idea behind uh, letting your so steve jobs generally now everywhere we talk about understand your customer and work for their needs right steve jobs drafted this very uh, arrogant statement which basically says your customer does not know what he wants uh, so you tell him or you teach him what he can have right uh and um, another similar uh, reference was given by uh, uh, the gentleman of ford he basically said um, if i had gone back to my customers asking what they want they would have said faster horses and not necessarily a car right so uh, the idea behind uh, some of the risks that apple takes is basically understanding how their customer would evolve or how their customer would live up to the you know growth that they bring into picture and sometimes these forced innovations or uh, um, and this is called behavioral redesigning uh, people who are developing mobile applications would probably understand more about this uh, i think someone dropped this message called cred app as an innovative product right uh, what cred is doing right now is called behavioral redesigning all along you always paid your credit card bills on specific portals where you uh, you go into each bank and pay it off they realize that people have multiple credit cards and uh, they created an app where uh, you can pay all the credit cards from one place uh, and now you are getting used to it this phase is called behavioral redesign right after this when they say that i will charge you a nominal 3 rupees fee uh, for paying that credit card bill you will say yes to it uh, that's that's how apple also works uh, so it is a mitigated risk they work by the idea of tuning your uh, so for example they suddenly pulled off the earphone jack and they they said it's going to be earpods and uh, you you would see the amount of wireless headphones that has come into the market after airpods came into play a lot of cost effective options have come in but realize the fact that wired headphones are slowly dying away uh, a natural death at that point in time a 3.5 mm jack will go completely irrelevant so that's what they are doing they basically tuning your mind and market to bring in a brand new product into picture how many of you still use a ear headphone it slowly dries see even i'm on a wireless headphone <laughs> i'm i'm sitting in front of a laptop i had the freedom to have a wired headphone but i still choose a wireless earphone that's how it is things change as we keep bringing in products which are forced to redesign your uh, behavior uh, you will be able to uh, succeed in those products but it is a very Uh, calculated risk it's not that easier what apple is playing is a big gamble along with their brand as well amazon once instituted into, introduced a phone i don't know how many of you know this they had this product called kindle uh, which was amazingly successful and then they thought that they could launch a phone as well a uh, great failure uh, it, it was called uh, kindle fire and no one really knew about it it was that unpopular that it died a peaceful death in less than 2 years time hardly anyone bought it uh, but it is it is one such idea right thinking that okay anyone who has a kindle would probably buy my phone as well so it's one one of those examples so what apple is playing is a, a gamble with along with their brand value and uh, clearly understanding how my customers would evolve not knowing what they want today but what they would want tomorrow so that's the kind of idea behind it Uh, hello sir yes please sir i have a question for you uh, uh -huh. sir i want to know about the product that you use the most and uh, how would you innovate that product i the product that i already use the most is it is that what you are asking yes and how would you innovate that product okay the product that i use the most today would be google search engine uh, that's the uh, highest used product from my side as a digital product um, 
i am hardly smart enough to innovate more on that uh, but uh, there is there is a thought process that um, that i've been uh, you know brewing on uh, for example um, uh, today is is the day that we all complain about fuel prices right uh, and uh, there is a lot of ev manufacturers that is in the market today but there is very little of them who talk about retrofit ev capabilities which is highly possible uh, given the science around it mechanics around it, it is highly possible there's a lot of much smarter people in the market uh, if i had an opportunity if i am uh, i'm if i have the freedom to uh, innovate or uh, or the funds to do so and research and knowledge i would uh, i would really look at the area of retrofit ev capabilities for two wheelers to start with uh there are companies which are doing this for commercial vehicles abroad uh, which means you can bring a bus or a or a truck and you can convert that into an ev so there's a whole lot of asset value that is saved uh, you have a braking system wheel chassis all of that is already there all you have to do is a self drive motor to the wheel or something that will basically be a attachable or detachable solution that will convert your vehicle into an ev uh so that's that's something that i've been dreaming about uh, Uh, thank you so yes okay this many questions i'm not able to pick the right ones but uh, there someone asked about uh, uh, investors uh, flowing in a lot of money to these unicorns who are making losses um it's it's a very debatable topic uh, so all these uh, Uh, unicorns primarily uh, uh, survive by the idea of the potential market value that they can generate and primarily the customer base that they are building uh, many of them do not uh, report profit also for a specific reason because they want to continuously grow their business which means that there is money coming in uh, which can easily be converted into profit in the books but i invest that money back into the business for further growth so this is like saying that um, I bought 50 cows and I sold a lot of milk. I made money, and right after that, I went and bought more cows. And now I will come back and say that sorry, I don't have uh, enough money. I made losses out of this business, which is not true. Actually, you made profit, but you convert that profit into cyclic investments, which will give you more yield. Uh, and that's what these unicorns are doing today. Uh, just imagine this physical example as a cycle. You will understand what exactly they're doing. whatever they are investing on is for additional customers back into their platform more uh, loyalty uh, you know amazon's discounts or talk about any other uh, you know unicorns that are making losses the losses are primarily being made because they are investing in ads promotions and uh, and uh, discounts uh, and these are intention is to yield more customers right eventually i bring in more loyalty more customers so they are just buying more cows uh will they eventually make money or not is a tactical play a uh, good example that you gave we work failed drastically but we we work also had a as a backdrop of a false uh, representation of real estate value uh, maybe you have to read a little more about the we work example but uh, this is what unicorns does today so they are they are making money they are not completely making losses but they are just investing it back into the cycle so eventually the reported numbers or the financials keep showing losses so that's kind of the backdrop excuse me sir may i ask a question yes you sir um electronic cars which are being launched in today's market are they an invention or an innovation you, you mean electric cars i believe right yes so, sir okay so electric cars was was invented almost 100 years back this year so if someone didn't tell you that uh that's primarily because there's a, a lot of oil politics in the backdrop but electric cars have been in, uh, invented about a 100 years back uh, along with the fueled cars that we uh, fossil fuel cars that we use today uh, at that point in time we had 1% of uh, global car population is ele- electric even today it is 1% that's a sad reality uh so uh, today it's taken a shape of innovation with people like uh, you know elon musk coming into play because they are trying to create a consumer market which is heavier for it uh, they are putting what you call as the swag element right so uh, earlier owning an electric car was funny there were people who used to drive ravas here in india in chennai but people used to mock them for having a toy car right today electric car is a swag element if you have a tesla you you it's a status uh, symbol right 
so that's that's what Elon Musk is doing for the for the electric cars, and that's exactly what needs to happen if you want to convert that into an innovative product. Uh, for a long amount of time, electric cars have been this uh, funny reference of uh, hybrids and uh, and and you know um, tree huggers and so on and so forth. That's all the local references that uh, electric cars used to have. Now it's changing into performance vehicles, things that are admired and and sorted after. So that's that's where it became an innovative product. Did that answer your question, Giselle? Or yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, um, I'll I'll pick up this question uh, very close to my heart. Brand, despite encouraging innovation, why Nokia dethroned from Indian market? Uh, unfortunately, Nokia didn't encourage innovation at the right time. So Nokia had this Symbian OS, which is their uh, native OS. I'm sure people who used it in the past would know it. Uh, and they were always confident that Symbian OS can pull off all the future uh, products. And uh, they felt that closed innovation was the most successful way. So uh, until Symbian OS and Microsoft Store was into play, remember that developers of Nokia or developers of Microsoft are the only ones who were allowed to make apps which can be consumed by the end users. When Android came along, they did what you call as an open market or an open source product. Uh, they said anyone in the world can create an app and anyone in the world can use that app. Um, and when Android came along, Nokia closed doors. Nokia said, I will not bring Android into my phones. And uh, after a very long uh, wait time, when they already missed the bus, they brought in Android Nokia phones. Uh, but it was already too late, and uh, and Symbian OS was displaced. Brands like Samsung would have uh, took over the complete uh, you know market, and uh, hence Nokia lost the market in India. Can you be on the mute? Uh, why would why couldn't BlackBerry change or adapt with Android? Same reasons as Nokia. Nothing, bitch. It it was just a lot of hypocrisy. Uh, that they didn't want to give up the idea of uh, of having a proprietary opportunity to have their own products alone. They they felt that Android was insecure. Even today, there's a lot of people who believe that Android is insecure, but it is the most popular uh, mobile OS in the in the available set setup. Um, yes, it is like Kodak. Uh, if, if people don't know the Kodak story, please understand. Uh, that um, Kodak was the first company to invent digital cameras, but never brought it to market. So inventors was right there within their company. They just didn't pay attention. So it was a lost innovation opportunity. Uh, and, uh, and that's why Kodak failed. You're right. How did Adani succeed so rapidly? Sorry, uh, no comments. Nothing to do with innovation in my eyes. Clubhouse application. Personally, not the biggest fan of it. I believe it's a social media which needs a lot more attention compared to the readable social media. There's an audio social media. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm this kind of person who would do two things at a time. Clubhouse doesn't allow me to do two things at a time. I can do only one. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm not a big fan. But uh, yes, it is, it is right now a FOMO. There's a lot of people jumping onto it because their friends are on it. It allows people to vocally share their freedom, but post lockdown, I'm not sure how many people will be able to use Clubhouse while they're sitting in their office or in college. You can definitely sneak a Facebook under your table. You can't do a Clubhouse. So, Elon Musk Hyperloop is a good idea or a bad idea. I'm, I'm, I'm a very small guy to comment about it, but uh, but in, in theory, it is the thought process is to, uh, so he basically, debates that drones is a bad idea and hence Hyperloop. That's Elon Musk's thought process. He believes that the kind of noise and disruption that drones will create will be very difficult and hence uh, uh, he, he trusts in the concept of Hyperloop. Uh, so you build a set infrastructure and you will be able to move things much more comfortably. Uh, drones is all about freedom. This is again iOS versus Android kind of discussion. So very complex to uh, comment on. Something about future of cloud storage will continue to expand. Will be uh, um, so if you if you look at the idea, people we often keep saying that uh, technology democratization, which means 
at some point in time some technologies become extremely liberal and available for everyone to consume uh, like the mobile internet today uh, which was an expensive affair about 15 20 years back even then we had mobile internet now it is a cost effective stuff that you can get for free uh, that's exactly what is happening for cloud storage as well um, sooner or later cloud storage will be something that we will be all entitled for free because there will be other ways of the making money Dogecoin going to become the dominant crypto? I doubt. It is a, a temporary fame that uh, Dogecoin is uh, probably enjoying, is what I understand. Um, but I'm not exactly sure about it. The market again. Okay. OTT platforms. Someone has spoken about OTT platforms. Will it disrupt the market of theaters? It will have an impact, is what I understand, uh, fellas. So I don't see it not leaving a dent. Um, sooner or later, people will say that it's okay. I'll wait a couple of weeks to watch it on on the television. Uh, so movie will become an experience only, and not necessarily a, a need to watch in theaters kind of stuff. It will become like your theme parks. So you will still go there, but uh, with a choice. Facebook and innovation buying WhatsApp instead of Facebook has a lot of privacy issues. Um, if you think that Facebook uh, is the only one who is looking at your phone, your data, then we are probably not understanding technology enough. Facebook is the most hyped uh, discussion like WhatsApp privacy policy and people jumping into this app called Signal because Elon said so. These are all uh, these are all very limited insights in my eyes. If you understand technology right, every time you go into a website and they say, can we allow cookies uh, on, on while you're visiting this page, that is also invading your privacy. And we all say allow invariably uh, without knowing what a cookies does. Uh, cookies basically observes all your action on the internet. Uh, it's like putting a person on your tail. He's just following right after the moment you say allow cookies. So, um, so Facebook is not the only person having privacy issues. All of internet is privacy uh, challenges, uh, but we are compromising uh, data versus comfort, right? So if you suddenly feel that YouTube should recommend me the right song, the right movie, uh, but at the same time, YouTube should not know what I'm playing on the, on the window, uh, that's a contradicting expectation, right? You want AI everywhere, but you will not give data for the AI to train itself. So. <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a paradox. Uh, so you will eventually get stuck there. If you want autonomous cars, the cars should know exactly where you're going, what speed you're traveling with, and uh, who other are the cars that are driving by, who's the owner of it. All of that are necessary data. Uh, if you think that is privacy invasion, sadly, that's the reality. Uh, it's a choice that you have to make. Yeah? Okay, I think we are very close to the close of the session. Um, Nandish, do you want to uh, wrap up the discussion? Uh, uh, well, yeah, any other points which you would like to share or we'll just take it for the discussion now? Uh, so from my point of view, uh, one, one closing uh, comment is that um, build awareness uh, as, as in individuals, right? So uh, innovation, it starts from uh, good awareness about what exactly exists today. So uh, many of them, um, so if you look at the open market today, even people who come up with great ideas fail to realize that some of these ideas are already thought through uh, or tested, tried, or, uh, you know, they start by saying that I have a great new idea. Uh, remember that most of the ideas are thought already. Try and validate yourself. Be aware of what is happening around you. That's the that's big starting point for being innovative. Uh, another important reference is that uh, if you could if you could think uh, exponentially, uh, uh, as as I was referring to in the first uh, few slides, uh, let go of linear thought process and think exponentially. That will give you a lot of advantage when it comes to innovation in the market. Uh, and that's that's the last comments that I have, Anandish. Okay. 
Uh, dear students, uh, one thing I can say is uh, uh, just to put a bit of a summary thoughts. Uh, maybe uh, how much time do you have, Garushankar? Because you need to catch up for a few other meetings, which I am aware. Five minutes more, sir. Five minutes more. Okay. Uh, then I'll make it very crisp. Uh, students, uh, innovation is a very large topic. One thing, please remember, it is not how fancy, how uh, kind of a most creative product or a service you come out with, but how you make a difference to the customer. That is what is the whole essence or the backbone thread which you should remember. Anyhow, in the entrepreneurship course, you are going to discuss uh, uh, very deep uh, and uh, you are going to dive into it. And another thing is you need not have to be completely new and creative in coming out with a product and a service. Even if you come out with a new design wherein which it enhances the utility and brings in the value, I think that also can have a significant value. If I had to give a simple example like what we discussed earlier, you know, ID those are better. Today you have ID filter coffee available in the sachet. You pay 10 rupees, it is available, keep it in the shelf. You don't have to go through all the overnight paint of preparing your filter coffee. See, how, how you bring in the value addition, that makes the difference. And basically you are taking the pain out of the customers and you are bringing the gain into their experience. If I can summarize it in uh, that uh, pain relieving and gain an answer. That, that's how the philosophy which we really talk in the entrepreneurship language. Um, anyhow, it, it is very, very satisfying for both of us, uh, Gauri Shankar and myself. I can definitely take the liberty to put it. You already have that innovative ideas and mindset. Just play with it. Keep playing with it for the next 22 months along uh, your journey at IBA. Probably that is how I would like to put it across. And uh, if somebody is very, very keen, uh, uh, please continue to keep exploring. Uh, See, success is not the only measure of your learning. It is how best you fail, how fast you fail is going to be the essence of the innovation. I, I think these are the two, uh, the kind of end thoughts which I would like you to live with. Of course, we'll have a continuous journey of this innovation. Even just to tell you, even IB has innovated quite a lot during last about 15 to 18 months in terms of our teaching and learning delivery. It, it's a continuous journey. So keep innovating yourself every time and you will keep adding a value and you will keep growing. That, that's all I can say as a last remark. Uh, Gauri Shankar, over to you. If you have so, any uh, final Thanks. Thanks for all the patience and listening to me, people. And thanks for having me here, Richa and uh, Nandish. Um, I, I definitely feel that some of the questions are very, very smart. And uh, this is a great bunch that is available on this batch right now. Um, I wish you all a great luck. Uh, feel free to connect to me on LinkedIn. If you are already not on the platform, please get on to one. It's a, it's a good recommendation for uh, being a good professional. Um, and um, I would love to stay in touch with some of you. Uh, and uh, looking forward to great results in future from the, this batch of IBA. Yeah. And uh, I, I can see some of the questions we have not been able to address. And when I take the individual sessions with each of your sections, I will personally address all of them. And uh, don't have to worry on that. We'll definitely, we are here to help you out. So, shall we close, Gauri Shankar? Yeah, definitely. Thanks a lot, people. Great. Thanks, yeah. Gauri. Thanks, Thanks you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. we'll get started with our common session, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Fine. So have a quick break and then we'll meet up again.